Welcome to In the Blue. Happy Friday. It's a cold one here in Salt Lake City, but we're excited to broadcast to you and go over uh, at a pretty important topic because as we uh, have brought incredible guests to you, today is one very specific and the only one we've had on our show that is specifically focused on building the hygiene team. Now for you chiropractors and other doctors out there, don't get frustrated because these principles apply to every team. I don't care if this is your rehab team. I don't care if this is your um, you know, regenerative medicine team. It's, it's the same principles, but Chris Brooks focuses and really uh, accelerates at taking uh, and designing a team intentionally. And I actually really like the title of our consulting company because it's hygiene by design. It's, it's that concept that we've talked about as the Blue IQ crew of designing a life that deserves to be lived. Why wouldn't you design your hygiene the way that you want it to produce? We talk about products as a Blue IQ company and you know what are we producing every day? And this fits right into it. So for those of you who are new to our show, remember, please subscribe. That way you're notified when we go live and, uh, and be here for every show because every Friday it's killer. So Chris, welcome to the show and thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Corey. This is a true honor and a privilege to have an opportunity to hang out with you and chill with your audience. So I just really appreciate it. And um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to, you know, just contribute in some way and uh, and be a part of the Blue IQ family. Thank oh, you. Heck yeah. The honor is ours. And I, Chris and I have known each other for a few years. And uh, yeah. You know, we were introduced by a mutual friend, mutual team member of our, our Blue IQ team. And and it's just been a pleasure watching you grow and watch you grow your consulting. And, and I, I can't say I've seen many who put more heart into what you do in your consulting. So um, so today, as we talk about building this, this culture driven, let's talk about driving high performance. Let's start there. Okay, so it really all begins uh, with culture, and I know uh, culture is kind of a soft subject, if you will. <laughs> We're in the business of creating performance, right, in the practice, and that's what a lot of the doctors are reaching out to me for is support in you know moving that needle of production and getting those numbers moving in the direction they want them to move. Uh, but the truth is, is that the foundation of all that really begins with the culture of the practice and what that looks like. And so uh, you know, that's one of the very first and most important things I do when I come into the practice is I spend a little time identifying what that is in the practice. Hmm. And so, uh, look, Can we pause there for just a second? Because we hear yeah. team culture a lot. We've talked about culture a lot on this show. But share with us, what do you see when you walk into your average practice? When you say you measure the culture, what are you measuring and what are you seeing that uh, you don't mind sharing with the audience? No, great question. Because very often I get doctors that say, well, I don't really have a culture here. And it's interesting when I reveal to them <laughs> the truth about that. And yeah. the truth is, is that there is a culture and whether you're keenly aware of what that is or not, or whether you've deliberately put things in place to actually design and create a culture, there is one that exists in every practice, whether you're in dentistry, chiropractic, any organization, there is a culture that exists there. And what culture basically is, and what I'm looking for and what I typically see are, um, I'm looking to identify how people think and what they feel and how yeah. they behave. Um, their attitudes, and how they interact with each other, um, with each other, meaning team members, how they interact with the doctor, how they interact with patients, and and more importantly, how they behave when no one's watching, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that really identifies, you know, what the, what the culture is. And then it's, you know, having that awkward and uncomfortable conversation with the doctor very often, and that is letting them know that, you know, the culture develops as a result of how the leadership uh, interacts, how the leadership behaves um, as a result of what they feel and think and, you know, what they're expressing on a daily basis. And um, so, so sometimes it's an uncomfortable conversation, but well, it's, yeah, it's critical. It goes, it goes back to that saying, we get what we tolerate, right? Yeah. So if we tolerate our team members 
driving the culture and we're not establishing a benchmark for them to live up to, you're saying you're, you're walking to these practices and they're claiming they don't have a culture, but that's every, there's a culture exists, whether you intentionally create it or not. So you're saying take the opportunity to actually establish the culture that you want. Yeah, because if you're not willing to step up and create a space to do that, your team's going to step in and create their own. And, every, yeah. and that results in everybody being on a different page. Because it serves, it serves them, right? Right, exactly. exactly. That, that makes total sense. Yeah, I love it. So where do we go from there? Once, once you've identified that and sat down with the doctor, rebuild the culture that does exist, do you right. do you then intentionally like design that? Like, do you interview the doctor? Like, what kind of culture do you want to exist here? That's exactly it. That's the conversation that it has has to take place. Um, and then, as a result of that, I invite the doctor to sit down with the team and create and collaborate that together. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. really is essential to. Um, have your team participate in the creation of what that culture is going to be. Obviously, you set the tone and mm -hmm. then you go into the creation and designing process with your team. What are the values? What are the core values of the team? What do we want to be known for? Uh, what do we want our legacy to be as a practice and as a team and individually as well? What we want to get out of it? How do we yeah. want to grow both personally and professionally here? And mm -hmm. then we, we identify what are we committed to, to making that happen? And then what is it going to look like? Cool. In creating that? Yeah, that's yes. a be beautiful process. I bet you there's a, some major discovery that comes out of that. It's really fun because you dive into the heart and soul of each of your team members when you start identifying what their core values are. Um, you get to know them on a much deeper level. And, you know, that's how we, we, connect. That's how we build rapport and trust and relationship with our team members. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's the basis of what we're doing. When we, when we have that handled, then performance drives itself. It, it's just, it is, it's such a beautiful thing when we can be in a space where we feel like we're part of creating what we're all about, you yeah. know, it's really yeah. important to enroll the team in that process. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So when we establish that culture, how do you fabricate motivation into there? Like with a team, I mean, we, we can establish that culture. How do we get them now to be the, the driver of the vision? Yeah. So I, I love this because I have a little saying that I use around it. And I firmly believe that creating a sense of belonging and purpose really ignites ownership. And Ownership inspires vision and vision always drives motivation. And um, so when we can create a sense of belonging and purpose for our team members, they feel a sense of ownership and that what they're doing has a huge impact on the team overall, patient yeah. care, the practice, the overall success of the practice. When they have that sense of ownership that really inspires a vision in what they're able to create and how they're able to create even more. And mm -hmm. that's what drives the motivation and performance in our teams. Cool. Yeah, bringing them into, uh, I call it the ownership mentality, um, letting them participate in the creation of the vision. And there's nothing more powerful than when a team member adopts the vision of the practice and goes to work to materialize it. Yes, absolutely. And it also helps to, to know what our, our team wants. And, um, you know, so I've, I've kind of boiled it down to um, three key ingredients, if you will. Um, and I kind of have a little fun with it. I call it the FLT. So instead of a BLT, our team wants an FLT. <laughs> I like a good BLT. <laughs> and it also stands for, for flight. So I always say take flight. And, uh, but with these three key ingredients and identifying what they are and what our team really wants, um, it can help the doctor in, you know, kind of building that platform for our team to really thrive in. And well, being proud. You, you got to share the three things now. Oh, you, you said so. take flight. <laughs> so, Don't take, tease us. so the FLT stands for the first ingredient is fulfillment. fulfillment. And so, you know, our team really wants uh, their work to be 
meaningful. They want to have meaning, their time and work to be something that is fulfilling and meaningful to them. We all want that. We spend a lot of time, a lot of hours, eight, nine, 10, sometimes more hours a day at the office, away from our family, loved ones, friends. I, you know, and so that environment, we want it to be a rich environment um, where we get something out of it more than just a paycheck. And, you know, while money may be a motivator, it only goes so far. But when we can create an environment where our team feels completely fulfilled and that their work is meaningful and means means more than than just themselves, that provides so much more wealth and richness in our lives than any paycheck can ever produce. And, um, you know, so, you know, creating fulfillment for our teams, uh, doctors are always asking me, you know, so how do I create fulfillment for my team? And it's really fun and it's really simple. When we invite our team to participate in, you know, it kind of goes back to the values that we talked about earlier. And that is identifying what we want to be known for. So maybe within the community, you know, how can we find fulfillment by creating an opportunity to give back and um, how can we volunteer at health clinics and serve the community as a team yeah. and you know i have one practice that does this every year each team member puts their favorite charity into a hat the doctor at the end of the year grabs the name out and based on the percentage or whatever the amount is that they agree on earlier in the year they give back to that team member's favorite charity oh, cool. And it's, you know, so we're working for more than just a paycheck, right? It becomes yeah. something that really is meaningful for our team. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's the first Love ingredient. Love it. Um, the second one is leadership. And so this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier as well. And um, it really all begins with, you know, who we are and the space that we're creating for our team and how we show up as a leader of the team. And so I always say how we do anything is how we do everything. And I ask doctors to take a look at how they're behaving uh, in the practice. It's really awkward and can be so uncomfortable for a lot of doctors. Sure. And they think they may be landing one way. And the truth is they're landing a whole <laughs> different way, a way that they're not intending. You know, it's not truly who they are. But to be honest with you, you know, and I've gone into practices, I've seen doctors like knocking people out of the way to get mm. out of the office before closing time, mm. you know, and it, you know, it's just, it's taking a look at who we really are as a leader and are we mm. aligned with what we say our values are and what's important to us and what's important for our teams. Yeah. Um, it's getting really crystal clear about that. Yeah, I tell you, that's probably pretty impactful when you have an outside perspective come in and observe that and then report it, like bring it to the surface. Yeah. Nice. Only for those that are willing. It's yeah. not easy you gotta want it. Right? Yeah. Um, but you gotta want it. You gotta really want it bad enough to to take a look at how how we contribute to that, what our personal responsibility is in all of that. Cool. We want a successful practice that really begins with us. Right. Very cool. So the last ingredient is the T, and that stands Think. for trust. And for trust. trust. Oh, so stress. trust. So oh, trust. Sorry, trust. you're kind of cutting that off me. <laughs> trust. We got it. Trust. <laughs> so you know, just like our patients need to build a level of rapport and trust with us yeah. um, in order to get enrolled in the treatment and recommendations that we're making for them, our team also needs a level of trust. Um, built within the practice. They need and want to know that they're in an environment where they're fully supported and it, they have a parachute and they're, the practice serves as a safety net for them to be vulnerable and to be in an environment where, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my article that I wrote um, recently, I shared something that a colleague shared with me, and I just thought it was amazing. And I'll, and I'll share it here again, because I just love it. And it is uh, when he gets a new team member on board, he sits them down and tells them now for the next three weeks, I want you to make three mistakes every day. And at the end of every day, I want you to report to me what those mistakes are. And right. at first, you might think, okay, that's kind of bizarre. <laughs> 
But when you really sit down and think about it, it's like, what a beautiful thing to be able to create an environment where um, somebody feels like, hey, I can make a mistake and it's okay. Mm -hmm. This is my opportunity to learn and grow. And this is embraced by the entire team so that people aren't um, engaging in making mistakes and then trying to cover it up or hide it or pointing fingers at each other but that this is truly an environment where somebody feels like they can make a mistake and they're not criticized, they're not judged for it. And so I invite uh, docs to really take a look at enrolling that practice in um, you know, that exercise with new team members. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great way to create some bonding and uh, you know, just embrace it. Yeah, I mean, talk about bringing a team together. Um, while we're on that topic of team members, and this kind of goes into your next point of attracting and hiring, but do you believe that great team members are hired or great team members are created? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both, right? And I say that, however, I do believe that, you know what, there could be some people that just aren't on board. They're just not a fit. And that's okay. They're a fit somewhere else where they can thrive and grow and allow them the opportunity to have that. Mm. Um, It's um, often what I see is doctors are so, um, I hate to use the word desperate, but it's the only thing that's coming to me right now. No, I I can resonate with that. Yeah, we get that way. We're so busy. Exactly. Yeah, we don't have the time to pay attention to a lot of that stuff, Mm -hmm. but they're they're desperate to hold on to people that aren't a fit. And I always say that the quickest way to lose your best people is to hang on to your worst. Mm -hmm. And great phrase. Say that one more time. The 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 quickest way to to lose your best people is you know to hang on to your hang on to your worst. That's a great phrase. I love it. Yeah, it's it's really destructive and damaging to the entire team to have someone that just isn't a fit and isn't yeah. going to or willing to participate in uh, being a part of what the values and what the mission is for the practice. And um, so let, let's just, can I just expand that on that just a second? Because I've been through this. I've been through this as a doctor and hiring um, or hanging on to, to team members that I knew were either not a cultural fit, they're not, they're not carrying their weight. They're not contributing the weight. And I knew that they were driving other team members crazy. And as an owner, and especially for you young docs out there, one of the things that you're going to experience is the, the, the pain. I, I don't know what other better word to use it, but the pain of letting somebody go and putting out an ad and then going through the interviewing process and then hiring process and then training process and it's hard. There's so much work to it. But I will tell you from almost 20 years of experience that you're limiting your growth of your practice by hanging on to those team members. The fastest way to see a dramatic spike in growth is by trimming the bushes, by getting rid of the the, the ones that aren't pulling their weight. And, and we will see a, a great growth. It's, it's just an opportunity. So, so just get over it. Um, Firing people's not personal. Uh, I've made more more employees cry over the years than I'd like to admit, but it's just what you've got to do. It's business. And that's business 101. That's not even business 102. That's business 101. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you can also remember that while they may not be a fit for your practice and your team, they yeah. all fit somewhere, right? Somewhere. Yeah. There's no real misfits they'll, out there. They'll be okay. I've never yeah. let anybody go that didn't land on their feet. I can exactly. <laughs> it's just, not, it's just, not, it's like a relationship, you know. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes letting that go is difficult for docs. And so I, so one of the mistakes, you know, that you know, and I hate to dwell on some of the negative stuff, but in looking at those mistakes is where we learn and grow, right? But one of the common mistakes I see is that the doctors are managing that process. And you know what? I just, there's nothing that drives me more crazy than, you know, having these doctors that are so talented and creative and their best work is with their patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, They need to be focused on doing what they love, the procedures they want to be doing, what they're best at. 
And that's not hiring and interviewing people. They yeah. need to assign that to somebody who's designated on the team to specifically hire maybe two or three top candidates yeah. um, the doctor gets an opportunity to meet, meet with and take the time with. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from that, it's, it, it is such a waste of time and it's so frustrating for doctors. That's a lot you of know. energy. It is. And, and then just to extend it on that, if you find yourself burning through team members, we may need to look at the doctor's uh, leadership. We may need to look at the culture. That goes back to your original points, right? That uh, that maybe there's something else broken in the in the leadership that we need to fix. So again, this is just an opportunity that Christina's bringing to, or Christine's or Chris. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at your name on the screen. <laughs> and, okay. uh, but but helping us look at and look at our culture, look at how we can lift our team members give them more of a purpose that they can come to work for more than just a paycheck because that's just not going to cut it these days and just create a beautiful experience, a beautiful thing where it's a family and, uh, and we are, we're all building this beautiful, beautiful practice that just elevates patient care like nothing. So to get a hold of Christine, She's got an amazing offer for us today. Christine, I'll let you share that because it's a, it's a doozy. This is 45 minutes one-on-one with you. That is a very limited offer. So share that with us. What do they yeah. get? So I would love an opportunity to offer to your audience a discovery session with me. So that can take 45 minutes and sometimes it even takes an hour and that's good. And, uh, you know, that can be on a lunch break or at the end of the day. End of the day is usually better and then there's no interruption with patients and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. But cool. just an opportunity to really share what, what's working, what's working really well, how to tap into that, get more of it. And then maybe what's not working so well. You know, I like to hear about all the successes and I also want to know, hey, where can we brainstorm to get the kind of results that you're really looking for? Are you getting the results you want and Mm -hmm. how can we make that happen for you? So I can brainstorm with you, give you some ideas, share some tips and insight and offer some suggestions to kind of get things moving and the ball rolling in the right direction. That's such a great opportunity to get some outside perspective and to, to vent, share with Chris, you know, what, what are the things that you're struggling with want to change? So you can see on our screen, you can go to hygienebydesign.com. Please mention that you're part of the Blue IQ family and, uh, and you want to connect with Chris. Chris is now a contributor. If you haven't read her blog yet, it ties into this, uh, this, this live show. So make sure you go back to our blog at getblueiq.com and read that. But, uh, but again, Chris, thanks for being on our show today. Oh, Fantastic thank job. You, Corey, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We are here at Facebook Live uh, in the blue. We are here to help you scale your practice, elevate your team, and uh, truly build the practice of your dreams. Thanks for being with us today. We're here every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Uh, we are in the blue. Have a great Friday.